Coming up on Pistons in Focus, presented by Chevrolet. His path to superstardom is the one less traveled. And for Ben Wallace, it certainly made all the difference. The undrafted center from Whitehall, Alabama, was told he couldn't make it in the NBA. But four All-Star appearances, four Defensive Player of the Year trophies, and one World Championship ring say otherwise. Ben Wallace's incredible journey is up next on Pistons In Focus, presented by Chevrolet. Welcome to Pistons in Focus, where we take a closer look at the careers of the men who made the greatest impacts on franchise history. In this episode, the focus is on Ben Wallace, who we came to know as the face of the 2004 champions, as well as one of the greatest defensive players in league history. But before he exploded onto the Motown and national sports scene, he first had to make an impact at Little Cuyahoga Community College in Northeast Ohio. It was 1992 when, as a freshman, Ben Wallace received a tidbit of advice that would forever change his life. When our equipment manager, you know, who's a real good friend of mine, even to this day, said, man, you know, if you, if you get stronger, you put on, a, you know, uh, put on about 10, 15 more pounds of, of muscle, so you'll be a real beast on the court. Little could anyone know at the time that telling a teenage Ben Wallace he should try lifting weights was like telling a young Jimi Hendrix to think about picking up an electric guitar. The results were astronomically greater than could have been predicted. The strange thing about, about working out is other people see it before you see it because you're looking at yourself every day. And I went home for the summer and uh, you know, my, my brother was like, Dog said, what you, what you been eating, man? So you getting big. Arriving with worn out sneakers and little else, Wallace would go on to become a Division II All-American at Virginia Union. Ben is probably the only player I ever had that never asked for anything. He was just, he was a poor kid when he came and, and you know, had so much pride. He, if he was broke, you didn't know it. I mean, he didn't ask you for any money. He didn't ask you for shoes. First leaving from Alabama going to Ohio, that was a big adjustment and coming here. You know, everything just like sort of slowed down and fell in place. Feel comfortable? Yeah, I feel very comfortable. In college, he played power forward and center, or the four and the five in basketball terms. But as an undrafted rookie with the Celtics Summer League team, he was asked to play in the perimeter as a two or a three, more befitting his true six foot seven inch size. You know, I told him point blank, hey, hey, I'm, I'm four or five. And you know, they was like, you know, you, not in this league, he told me that I was, I was too small, that I'd never make it in this league playing at the um, 4 or 5. Ben spent the season in Italy before famously undersized Hall of Fame center Wes Unseld, who was then the GM of the Washington Bullets, offered him a spot with his club, simply saying, we need you to defend and rebound. Ben spent three seasons in D.C., where along with his game, he developed a whole new look. You know, me, Chris Webber, you know, Darvin Ham had made a bet you know, uh, that we was, we was going to see how long that we can go without cutting their hair. And, uh, you know, needless to say, I won a bet, but I never got paid. So those guys who's watching, I need no money. In the 2000 season, and now with the Magic, Ben and his new look fro averaged eight rebounds in just 24 minutes a game. At season's end, he became a free agent, and one of the first calls the 25-year-old received was from Joe Dumars, who was on the verge of losing free agent Grant Hill to the Magic. As he told a commercial film crew at the time, Ben Wallace was his kind of player. Uh, I think someone asked him, you know, what type of player are you? And he said, I'm a 6'9", 245-pound guy who believes in tagging the other guy before he even gets to tag me. That's who Ben Wallace is. I came in, I, I talked to Joe, you know, I talked to a, a couple other people in the organization or whatever, and, you know, I was sold, I was sold right away. You know, um, if the, regardless whether it, if the trade would have went down or not, I was coming to Detroit. A trade was worked out, and Grant Hill was sent to Orlando while the Pistons acquired Wallace and guard Chucky Atkins. 
In his first season in Detroit, Ben finished second in the league in rebounding with 13 a game, while teammate Jerry Stackhouse set a franchise record by averaging nearly 30 points a game. And though the team would lose 50 times that season, it appeared that the seeds for a successful turnaround were in place, especially behind the defensive genius of an undersized center with its oversized head of hair. When we return on Pistons in Focus, we'll track Big Ben's quest for a championship, as well as the real story behind the infamous brawl that occurred at the Palace just a few months later. Entering the fall of 2001 for his second season in Detroit, Ben Wallace learned he would bid farewell to Teal and wear a red, white, and blue Pistons uniform. As it turns out, the return to traditional colors wasn't the only way in which the Pistons would get back to their roots. You know, when I first came here, I always knew this, you know, it's pretty much where I belong. Looking back at the team's past, you know, with, with Joe and, and Zeke and, you know, Bill and Beer, when Rick Carlisle came in, he sort of put us in a position where, you know, we can somewhat play like those guys. Just like the bad boys more than a decade earlier, Rick Carlisle's Pistons were determined to win games with a tough-minded defensive approach. And at the center of it all would be the most intimidating defensive force in the league. Again, saves the day. In 2002, Wallace became the shortest player ever to lead the NBA in both block shots and rebounding. The next season, a brand new backcourt saw firsthand what Ben could do for them. When we used to go out there and play on defense, he used to always tell me, look here, Rip, if you get beat, don't foul your guy, because I'll be there to block a shot. And when you hear that from you, 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 your center or your power forward or a guy that's playing behind you, Gives you a sense of confidence. You know, when you come here and you see his work ethic, you know, and you see what he means to the team and what he means to the game out there, seeing how he can just dominate an entire game without making one basket, it was, uh, it was phenomenal, man. It was phenomenal. I had never seen that before. As impressed as his teammates were, the public adulation peaked even higher. Ben Wallace, the undrafted, too short to play center from Whitehall, Alabama, was now the most popular athlete in Detroit. It was something that I could appreciate because I started at the bottom of the pack, you know, um, you know, not getting drafted, having to go to his place and have people tell you, you know, you, you're too small and you can't do this and you can't do that. And, you know, I lived through people telling me what I couldn't do, you know, and what I need to do. And now people appreciate me for what I, what I can do. In 2003, Wallace and the top-seeded Pistons found themselves down three games to one in the first round of the playoffs to the eighth-seeded Magic. Following game four, the normally stoic Wallace publicly criticized his teammates without naming names, and he wasn't backing off one day later. You know, as if anybody feel the, offended about, you know, you know, you know, that wasn't my intention or whatever, but, but if you feel offended about it, then maybe it's you. You can lay the hammer down when you're the first one to show up. You outwork everybody. You're the last one to leave the gym. And everybody knows that at the end of the day, the only thing that you really care about is winning. They, they, <laughs> Certainly wasn't going to challenge him on it. That, that would have probably been a mistake. The Pistons responded to Ben's tough talk, storming back and taking the series in seven. But after they were swept out in the East Finals, Carlisle was let go and in step Hall of Fame coach Larry Brown. Larry held everybody accountable. He, you know, he, Rick, he ran a system. You know, it was, it was a tight system. You know, hey, you do this, you do this, and you do that. Now you don't do this, you don't do that. And with Larry Brown, everybody's, you know, everybody's going to play basketball. That's the reason I respect, um, you know, Larry Brown so much because he gave me the opportunity to go out and do, you know, everything. He basically told me, hey, you know, anytime you catch the ball, you feel like shooting a shoot, you know, because you deserve it. Ben was even more pleased when he heard that they'd acquired Rasheed Wallace at the trade deadline. The two Wallaces clicked immediately, controlling the paint like few duos ever had. The result was a trip to the finals where Ben, who was giving up nearly half a foot and close to 100 pounds to Shaquille O'Neal, helped 
paved the way for the now famous five game sweep. It's hard. He's, he's not afraid of Shaq. You know, what's the worst that Shaq can do to you? Dunk on you. You know, and he does that to everybody. So, you know, Ben was, he wasn't afraid to stick his chest out there, stick his face in there, you know, got hit with a couple elbows. So I think it was his heart that made the difference. In the series clinching win, Ben racked up stunning numbers, 18 points and 22 rebounds. When we had that opportunity to seal the deal, we always got it done. And, um, you know, we didn't want to go back to L.A. We didn't know what to expect, you know, going back to L.A. So we, we said, you know, this is an opportunity. The trophies is in the building, so let's go get it. With the championship glow still hovering at the start of the 05 season, the Pistons found themselves in the short end of a November 19th blowout loss to the Pacers amid a testy encounter between Ben and Ron Artest. Only one play, I think I blocked the shot a little, and he said, told the official that, you know, in the follow through, that I hit him in his head. And the official was like, just play. Y'all got control of the game, just play basketball. And, uh, and he told the official that, all right, don't worry about it. I'm going to get him after that. And it didn't, it didn't matter whether it was a hard foul or a touch foul or whatever. You know, when somebody say that, you know, I'm going I'm to get you. Yeah, you think they're trying to get you. When our test followed through in his threat, Wallace reacted immediately. What happened next lives in NBA infamy as our test, who'd reacted calmly after the shove from Ben, became irate when hit with a full cup thrown by a fan. The Pistons recovered from the incident and returned to the finals in 05. After dropping the first two games in San Antonio, Wallace set the tone for a Pistons blowout with the steal and dunk on the first play of game three. But Ben's inspirational play would become a footnote with Robert Ory's three-pointer in game five ultimately serving as the defining moment of that series. Ben racked up his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award in 06, this time under new coach Flip Saunders, whose offensive ingenuity helped the team to a franchise record 64 wins. But it became evident that Wallace wasn't on the same page as his new coach, culminating in an April meeting with the Magic when he refused to re-enter the game. In the East Finals that year, the Miami Heat met the Pistons with a caliber of defensive intensity that had been a Motor City trademark. The Heat won it in six, and now free agent Ben Wallace had a decision to make. I had to pick up and leave, or I had to suck up and buy into the system. If I stay here, and if I don't truly buy into the system, you know, am I gonna, you know, make everybody else here unhappy? Then I came down to the decision what it, it would have been easier for me to leave, you know, and allow these guys still to go out there and, you know, play hard and compete every night and not have to worry about what I'm thinking or what I'm doing. And to go out there, you know, halfway on board, you know, of what, of what I thought was going on. So that's, that's what I made the decision to leave. Ben Wallace signed with the Chicago Bulls that summer, a somewhat stunning turn of events for a player that had become the face of the Pistons franchise.